G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia and the market's gone down even more. It just keeps tumbling. And I guess the question is, just how low can we go? Are we actually in a bear market? And look, it is possible. My personal thoughts is no. And my personal thoughts are, if that is the case, I'm just going to keep buying through it because I've learnt my lesson from 2017. I'll have still got it slightly wrong, as in I didn't sell enough at the right time, but I know I'll just keep buying and eventually these will go back up, at least as long as I'm in good projects. I'm sure I'm in some that probably will never, you know, kind of get back to their old glory days, whatever the case may be. But, you know, I'm buying Bitcoin at the moment. As long as Bitcoin continues to dip, that's what I'm really piling into. And I will start to do the same with Ethereum. But I'm really not interested in buying Ethereum until it's under $2,000. As long as it's above $2,000, uh, I'm happy to not buy it. But Bitcoin, as long as it's sort of under that $40,000 mark, particularly when it's getting into the mid-30s, low-30s and 20s, happy to buy it. That's me. You know, you've got to make your own decisions. But anyway, let's go have a look at some of the stories. And hopefully you'll be able to see, you know, why I, I'm actually really bullish at the moment. Because this is where the big money is made. It's not made when it's all the way at the top. It's when you're buying it when it's way down from the top. Now, again, I'm not saying it can't go lower, though, because we could be in a bear market. Sorry, I think I said bull market before. That's completely possible. But I think we're still in the midst of a bull market. And this is just a correction to really shake out weak hands. But let's have a look. So 1.6 trillion. So I'm really now thinking that we might have to get down closer to 1 trillion. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's kind of roughly where I'm thinking. There might be another sort of, you know, roughly half a trillion dollars to be lost before we sort of see the bottom. But again, that's just a guess. That's not really based on too much. That's just considering we got to, you know, two and a half sort of trillion dollars and it was a little bit over exuberant. But the whole market down 11.5%. BTC dominance growing though, 42%. A lot of people are sort of putting stuff back into Bitcoin and just simply cashing out as well. For me, uh, I don't need to cash out. I've got some cash on the side. I just keep buying the dips. I've just literally bought Bitcoin this morning at about $35,000. I bought some the other day at $39,000. Like I said, I sold some Bitcoin at 47000 and I was really kicking myself and I thought, oh, that was probably a bad idea. But it's turned out to be a great idea because I've been able to buy the Bitcoin that I sold back cheaper and I've still got cash on the side to continue to buy more if it continues to go down. So again, Ethereum, I sold some Ethereum at around sort of $1,700. And again, I was kicking myself and that still may be wrong. But we'll have to wait and see. I may be able to buy some uh, below 17, sorry, not 17,000, 1700 so that's what I'm looking for. Really, I would want to see Ethereum down at around about sort of $1,500 or cheaper before I'm looking to buy more Ethereum. But let's have a look. All right. We can see it's just a sea of red. I'll be surprised if anything's really done well. I mean, Polkadot's, you know, really got monstered 40%. But that's what I mean. Like Bitcoin, 25% over the last seven days. 36 to Ethereum, 44 to Binance, 27 to Dogecoin, 27 to XRP, 40 to Polkadot, internet computers down, you know, uh, 50%. Bitcoin really has fared the best, don't get me wrong, Cardano's held a little bit better than it, but that's what you got to remember when you're in these markets, is Bitcoin generally doesn't pump quite as much as some of the other coins, but it also doesn't dump by as much as the other coins. So that is why Bitcoin is your best safe haven. Ethereum, love it. I uh, want to buy more, but it's still not a finished product and it's still more volatile than Bitcoin. The upside was more, but now the downside is more as well. All right, let's have a look. What's done really good, well, sorry, has anything done really well is what I should say in the last 24 hours. I'm going to say possibly not, but I haven't even checked. We're doing this live together. All right. Well, there we go. I stand corrected. Horizon did well. Helium is up just a little bit. Then we're just into, you know, the stable coins and everything's down. So other than Horizon, Horizon has done well, but it's still down 26% for the last seven days. So this might be a bit of a sort of fake out. So really, no gains whatsoever. Synthetic seems to be holding all right, which I'm really glad. Hopefully it means it's found the bottom. 
But look, if there's further downside to Bitcoin, everything else is going to bleed a little bit more. That's just the way it is. All right. What's been hit the worst then? This is going to be scary. What's really got clobbered in the last 24 hours? In the top 100 at least, because outside the top 100 is probably even worse. All right. Huobi really got knocked around. OKB. Uh, so that sorry that was Huobi BTC Huobi token though Thorchain Phantom Ave is being absolutely monstered, but look I like Ave and I'm gonna uh, start to dollar cost average into some more Ave, Binance Safe Moon Cosmos Nexo Compound, Compound down to four hundred dollars. There you go. I think it was up around a thousand dollars for a while there. Pancake Swap Terra V Chain getting monstered as well forty percent over the last seven days. So you can see, look, Polygon still up 45% for seven days, but down 20%. So there is a lot of downside at the moment. Uniswap, I mean, God, I was buying into Uniswap over the last sort of week or so, and I've probably lost about 42%. But in the end, I still like Uniswap. I'm happy with my position, and I'll possibly consider buying more. All right, so you'll be able to look at the coins that I really like, and while people are selling at the moment, that's fine. I'm not selling anything. I'm buying at the moment. <laughs> I know this is the time when the biggest kind of gains are made. Now, if we are legitimately in a bear market, then I'm going to be buying at prices that aren't going to be the lowest, but it doesn't matter because I'm sure that they're going to get back to their all-time highs and go above in the next cycle. And I've learned that lesson that generally if you just hold, as long as you're in good projects, you will make that money back in the future. It just means you might have to wait a while. And again, I do not think we're in a bear market. Now, here's the reason for it. All right, we've put in some fib retracement, so from lows. So if we go from this sort of low, and generally the kind of one point, you know, sorry, the 0 0.618 is, you know, the golden mark where people really want to sort of buy. Well, we've dipped below that according to this one. So I think this one is fairly null and void that this low isn't the one that we can go off. But we can still see here's the 0 0.68 and that was at around sort of 42,000. And I think a lot of people were saying that they thought there was going to be good support at 42,000 because of this kind of stuff and because of this. And I agreed. But anyway, that's been null and void. So we go back to this one, this low. Now we look where the 0 0.68 is and have a look at this. It's almost where we are and where we've been wicking to thereabouts around that $35,000 range again I bought some Bitcoin at 35000 just this morning now if we don't want to use that one and we decide to go from no this kind of low point where we had a whole lot of accumulation after we had that really big dip well where's the 0 0.68 from here at around about 30000 and have a look at that that almost lines up perfectly with where these wicks are now, if we want to go from the real capitulation that we had way back in March last year, 0 0.68 is down at around about $27,000. So really, this is what I'm looking at at the moment. It's definitely possible Bitcoin gets down to this $27,000 mark. I just don't see it happening because what I'm seeing from these kind of lows, and you know, you can ch try and find other lows if you want, but you've just got to find a low to do your fib retracement and go from there and also so I've marked the low I kind of this was a kind of low point or at least an accumulation point another low and another low and really that gives us a price range of around about 42,000 down to 27,000 is going to be kind of the ideal buying zones thereabouts if you believe that we're still in a bull market if you think we're in a bear market then literally don't touch anything and what we're waiting for is when bitcoin sort of bottoms out and it does something like this and travels sideways for a while what you might see is something like this actually and then it'll kind of pump back up and travel sideways in line uh, with generally some old support and resistance so that's really like you know if you truly want to know whether we've found the bottom or not this is usually a bottoming pattern like this you'll see a, a steep drop off and then it'll come back up to you know roughly where it was before and it'll travel sideways for a while this is how we're going to know we're at the bottom uh, of you know whatever that bear market is and i don't think we're going to see a sell-off you know for another year like we have previously to get down to come back to somewhere like here or sort of maybe here or something i just don't see that happening but it's possible so for me anything from 42,000 down to about 27,000 
uh, is a good buying opportunity based on these. Now again, I'm no charting expert. I've just put in some places where I've some found some lows to try and work out where I think the retracement might be. So again, 0.68 is usually the kind of golden ratio that people go off. And if we go by this, you know, last low here, then we're below that already. And the other low uh, takes us to 0.68. We're kind of thereabouts. We've been bouncing off it. And then there's a couple that uh, go lower. So again, that's my kind of chart analysis. And again, I'm no chart expert. I'm just trying to find some low points to work out where it might come back to. So for me, I'm happy to buy Bitcoin under 42,000. And again, look, if I'm wrong and it goes below 27,000, I'm going to accept that I'm wrong, but I'm not going to accept this crap that people say that Bitcoin's dead, it's over, it's going to zero. There's been hundreds of times that has been stated since Bitcoin's inception. It's never gone to zero. It hasn't died. It's going to continue to grow. There's all this China FUD and government regulation FUD that's out there and it's freaking people out. And I know that if I just keep putting my money into Bitcoin and in good projects, in time they will make those gains back. If I'm into some bad ones and there's a fault in the code, well, too bad, so sad. What can you do? That's just the way it goes. But for me, I am happy to buy Bitcoin under 42,000. And I really would be surprised if we go below 27,000. But I have heard people say that they think we need to come back and retest this kind of $20,000 mark. So if that's the case, I'm going to continue to buy Bitcoin until whatever price it gets to, even if it means it's coming back to here to $9,000, then so be it. I will continue to buy Bitcoin and I will just hold uh, all my other altcoins in that and wait and see what happens. Because I only need one kind of to win and I bought Ethereum at a really good price. My average price for Ethereum was around about kind of $250, $320 thereabouts. I don't think I'll ever see uh, Ethereum that cheap again, so I won't sell that. And my other altcoins, well, I haven't put that much money into them in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum make up well over 50% of my total portfolio. So I'll just let them ride and see what happens because I'm fairly confident uh, in those. Same with ADA. I bought ADA at a really good price. I bought Polygon at a really good price. So I'm just going to hold and I will wait for the next bull market if we are truly in a bear market. But this isn't what a peak normally looks like. This is just simply something rolling over, coming back to find some support, wherever that may be. Again, something like this comes up, rolls over, comes back, finds its old support or resistance you know support becomes resistance resistance becomes support whatever you want to call it and that's what i think this might be a bit of a bart simpson pattern i think that might be this this is a shakeout before we then see something like this that is honestly the gut feeling i have it was a little bit like this this was a pump out and i think it was generally supposed to come back to here before it started to make its way back up but then we had you know what the pandemic and that caused that so that's what i think is going on at the moment all right, moving on, we've got some interesting news. So there's all this news about China. So in yet another reiteration, the State Council of China has brought up the crackdown on Bitcoin mining and trading. This isn't new news. That's what people aren't understanding, particularly those who haven't been in the space for a while. China already have been doing this for a really long time. This is old news that they have just kind of, you know, resurfaced and put back out there again. It's nothing new. So it says here, it's worth noting that this is the second time this week when China is recycling old regulations directly impacting the price of Bitcoin. It's not new regulations, it's the same old stuff that they've had going for years, but they just circulate it and it creates all this FUD and fear and all the rest of it. And I honestly think they're, gonna, they're buying it up. And I think there's a lot of market manipulation going on by big players and things like that. And if you've had a look on Twitter and on other YouTube channels, they're talking about the Wyckoff uh, charting sort of pattern. And that's almost played out perfect. And that is literally, you know, market manipulation to a T. All right. Now we can go over here. And this carries on from this. So sources suggest that the latest crackdown on Bitcoin mining will be limited to operations that are not using hydroelectric power. So they're not even latest crackdowns though. They're the same old crackdowns, but anyone who's mining Bitcoin uh, in green fashion, they don't have to worry. It's just here they're talking about a number of coal-powered mining outfits in China. Uh, the number, sorry, is significant. And that's where a lot of it comes from. But most of them, 
have worked out that they make more money going green. So they're using hydroelectric and hydroelectric's good, but it's not as good as wind uh, and solar. And that is really where a lot of them are leading to, wind and solar. That is cheaper. Uh, you know, it's cheaper money, cheaper power again. And that's where they can make the really big money for. So this China stuff that's going on at the moment, I'm not even worried about it. It's been around for a long time. There was so much China FUD back in 2017 as well. And the same thing, whenever there was some bad Chinese news, uh, it had dumped the price, but then eventually it would go back up again. All right, so it's not just Bitcoin that you know uh, dominates at all, but this is gonna have an effect as well. So bullish on Ether, not Bitcoin. UK Parliament member mentions the flippening. Now the people have been talking about this for a long time. And I get the feeling like it probably will come true in the future. I'm just not exactly sure when it will come true. There's a lot going on on uh, Ethereum. But don't get me wrong, there are people who are trying to build smart contracts on the Bitcoin blockchain. If they can do that, then it will be a really hard battle. But, you know, Bitcoin's got a whole lot of scaling issues as well uh, that would probably make it, you know, equally as hard for them to scale to the lengths they have to for ethereum if not even more so tom oh god i'm gonna i'm gonna butcher this and i do apologize tom tugendart <laughs> hopefully i said that right a member of parliament of the united kingdom urged the nations towards implementing more innovations in its financial sphere Interestingly, he also outlined the growth of the cryptocurrency sector and hinted he was more bullish on Ether rather than Bitcoin. And in all fairness, I am too, but Bitcoin's still the more stable of the one. It doesn't go by up as much, and as we already saw in the charts, it doesn't go down as much as the others either. All right, Bitcoin, Twitter mentions skyrocket to new all-time high after the crash to 30,000. So it does seem like there's a lot of support at 30,000. Does that mean it can't go lower? Absolutely not. But I really do think that bottom was in, as I said the other day. So Bitcoin's massive fluctuations have attracted a crowd as the number of BTC-related tweets went through the roof for a new all-time high. Now, a lot of those can be negative BTC tweets. So, you know, people are saying, oh, this is it, the market's dead, I've lost so much money, and it's going to zero, and it's never coming back, which is, you know, you see a lot of that stuff going on in Bitcoin. But it also shows you that a lot of people are still into the space. They haven't completely exited because they're still tweeting about it. Now, although Bitcoin's price may have tumbled by 40% since its peak, the asset's popularity and engagements are actually booming. According to recent on-chain data, the number of tweets involving the primary cryptocurrency has spiked to a new all-time high amid and following the latest market crash. So this space is not dead. Like You know when you're in the legitimate bear market because hardly anyone's talking about it. Because so many people are talking about it, 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 you know, it's definitely possible we're in a, in a, God, I'm struggling again. We're in a bear market, but I don't think so. Like I said, I already showed that uh, trading pattern with so many people talking about it. It also shows you how we're not, you know, a complete, uh, another disdain and everyone has left the market yet. All right, CME gap, sorry, CME returns to the second uh, place in the latest rankings of Bitcoin future exchanges. So again, institutions, they're buying this dip. They are jumping in at the moment. This is, you know, again, if I don't have anything on the Wyckoff uh, sort of charting pattern, I probably should have, but I didn't have time to get it. Uh, and that is just playing out perfectly with the Bitcoin market right now. Uh, and it literally shows that this is what happens. We want the big institutions to get here, you know, to pump the market up and all the rest of it but they will manipulate the absolute backside out of it. And that is what's going on at the moment. Hence, well, I'm just buying. I don't care what price it goes down to. I will just continue to buy the dip. Every time it dips a little bit lower, like I said, I bought some at 39,000. I sold at 47,000, not all my Bitcoin, but I sold a bit and I bought some at 39,000. I bought some at 34,000 this morning. I've always got money sitting on the side. I'm never gonna spend all my money for in case it goes down. If Bitcoin goes down to 30,000 uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna to buy some more. And if it goes down to 27,000 in a week's time, I'm gonna buy some more and I'm just going to keep accumulating. That is the name of the game and that is the one that I plan to master. All right. Some more bullish news again. What makes you think that this is all over when things like this are happening? All right, 
Nebraska legislate, legislator approves framework for digital asset banks. These are coming. This is not the end by any stretch of the imagination. Nebraska's uni, uni, oh God, I don't even know how to say that, state legislator has passed a bill that would create a state bank charter for digital asset depositories and institutions. Bill 649 would create a charter that would give consumers and institutions places to custody their digital assets. The banks will look very similar to Wyoming special purpose depository institutions such as Avanti Financial and Kraken Financial. The bill will sorry, the bill also allows already existing state chartered banks in Nebraska to open crypto banking divisions. So again, yes there's a retracement, but all of this is happening because the big guys know what is coming and what's about to happen. Now, in banks in Nebraska, sorry, banks in Nebraska won't lend in fiat though, and each bank has to hold 100% of its assets in reserves. Now also, Nebraska's digital asset banks uh, can't accept fiat as deposits, so you're gonna have to go to somewhere else to turn your fiat into something like Tether or USDC or whatever uh, to then be able to use these banks and things like that. But that's the space. These things are happening and they're happening for a reason because the big players see what's coming. The regulations are coming to open this up. They're not coming to regulate it to close it down. They wouldn't be giving out these kind of financial licenses and so many big players wouldn't be trying to get into this space. This is simply the market got really sort of overheated and the big players wanted to bring it back down so they can build their, you know, build their nest egg again. That's what they keep doing. They'll push it up and then they'll push it down and they'll buy it when it's low and when everyone's basically capitulated. So we go over here. Institutional Bitcoin buying spiked around Wednesday. So that was around the crash when it got down to that 30,000. Blockchain data shows large investors remain confident of Bitcoin's long-term prospects and continue to accumulate coins on dips, shrugging off concerns about the negative environmental impacts of cryptocurrency mining. Again, a majority of them are starting to go green. Wallets linked with the over-the-counter, so the OTC desk, registered an outflow of 10,000 BTC on Wednesday when Bitcoin tanked from 43,000 to nearly 30,000. So the big players are buying these dips. Now, last thing I want to look at before I go, and we'll call it a day. Where are we? Fear and Greed Index. Oh, I've lost it. I'm having. Here we go. Come on, you can do it. Extreme fear, so it's at 19. We were a little bit lower yesterday, so things are slowly growing, but we're still basically in extreme fear. This is when the biggest opportunities come to you. It's the hardest thing to wrap your head around, and I've made those mistakes. When it gets like this, I've panicked and sold, and I did that with my XRP, and I regret it. Uh, and I did it in the last uh, cycle in 2017. I sold a few things uh, when you know I thought it was all over and it come back to bite me. And so now this is when I'm buying an extreme fear and I'll keep buying until it starts to flip the other way. And when it gets up to around you know these kind of crazy things like here, 73, that's a good time to start selling. Not everything if you believe in the project, but just taking some profits. So you can take advantage of the days when it comes back to this. That's probably the hardest thing I've had to learn in investing full stop is I've always wanted to buy over here and I've you know wanted to panic sell over here. I'm lucky. I've only panic sold a couple of times, but I really have learned my lesson. I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to buy when it's here and sell when it's here. All right, look, that's it from me. And so again, let's go back over here. Really, anywhere from 42,000 down to 27,000, I think is likely going to be the bottom. But if you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm not going to be right all the time. I've been wrong a number of times. But I have made some pretty good gains from cryptocurrencies since going way back in 2017. And what I've found is that really, if I've not been able to time it right, and we are truly in a bear market, that's the best time to accumulate and wait for the prices to go back up and then sell at the next kind of high points. All right, that's it from me.
stay safe, be kind to one another. If you somehow manage to get on that game train at the moment, congratulations to you. You've done extremely well and I don't know how you did that unless possibly you shorted the market. And that's it from me and I'll see you next time.